Hey everybody, it's RC again, and I'm, well, I'm done bringing you trailers for E3 2017, but I've done about 30 of them. Woo! 30 different games. Well, almost. We're, I think I hit about the 28 mark, somewhere around there, but that is a lot of games to cover in such a short time. I, I've been staying up late getting these trailers all together, you know, giving you my thoughts on them and everything. If some of them come through where I don't sound as coherent, it's probably because it was like 2 in the morning at the time and I was like ready for sleep, you know what I mean? Wow, what a week though. A lot of great games. Um, so what I'm doing for you here is this is a, a wrap-up show where I'm, I decided to pick my top 10 of the almost 30 games that I covered here. The top 10 games that I'm looking forward to. Now, th this is going to factor in a few different things. It would be the, the excitement of the announcement, how soon I get to play it, and how much I actually want to play it. So there's going to be a few games on here that are actually, you know, I have a, a couple honorable mentions before we actually get to the top 10. But I wanted to cover two games that are not actually on my top 10 that were blocked. Uh, two trailers from EA for games that I thought were interesting, and I actually uploaded two trailers with my thoughts on them, but they were blocked on YouTube because EA, I guess, decided that, hey, we don't want you to give any more exposure to our game because that would be bad if uh, people knew about the game. I don't know. I, I'm always at a loss for that. But regardless, the first one is Anthem. Now, the reason why Anthem did not make the top 10 is because it looks cool, but it reminds me too much of The Division. It feels like The Division on a planet. And for those of you who remember, I actually did a beta. Uh, I played through the beta for The Division, and I, I was really keen on it the first hour I was playing it, but after that it really started to dawn on me that I'm like, wow, all this is is like leveling up and getting loot at the end, and the story to it, there's like nothing there. It's just a multiplayer loot getting game, and I'm like, eh, I'm sorry guys, I'm, I, I never ended up getting the game because of that. And Anthem looks like it's gonna be more or less the same. It looks a lot more interesting, you get a mech suit, you can fly around, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think it's uh, something I'm gonna be really interested in when it comes out next year, unless they do something really, really cool with it that uh, was different from what they showed this year. Now, the other game that I'm not including on the top 10 that I thought was interesting was called A Way Out, also from the EA press conference, which was blocked on YouTube here for some odd reason. But regardless, the game looks really, really interesting. It's, it's all about co-op, two-player co-op, not any more than that. So you and a friend, and they even said preferably on the same couch, playing together, that's what they want. Though you can play online with somebody if you so choose. Now, basically you play two characters trying to escape prison. You get out of prison, you become fugitives, or you're trying to get your life back together. I'm not exactly sure what the story is, but it looks super cool. Um, and uh, the reason it's not in the top 10, though, is just because it is a ways off. It's it's pretty far away. I was really excited when they showed it, but, like, I don't know if there was even a release date made for it. I think it said 2018, but it's, it's a ways off. So I think, like, this game has the potential to be on my top 10 for next year's E3. So I'm going to exclude it for this year, uh, but I, I, I did want to give it a mention here. Now, as much as Anthem and A Way Out look cool, those are not actually my honorable mentions. I just wanted to bring them up because they were blocked on YouTube. I have two actual honorable mentions that did not make my top 10, but I am very excited for. The first one is Beyond Good and Evil 2. Now, you might be wondering, why the hell is not this not in your top 10? When I saw the trailer, you were saying, this is, you know, one of your most anticipated games ever, blah, blah, blah. I'll give you a reason, and that is the other 10 games on my list, I'm more excited to play because they're coming out sooner. If Beyond Good and Evil 2 was announced to be coming out this holiday, it would be number one. But because all they gave us was a CD trailer, and they've been roping us along for so long, and we haven't actually seen what the game is like, there's no gameplay out whatsoever, I can't include it in my top ten because I don't know if I'm excited about it yet. Who knows? It could end up being like a, a space shooter game, right? It won't be. But what if it did? What if they show this amazing CG trailer and the game ends up being something completely different from the first game and it's not something I want to play? It is possible. It could happen. You never know. And that's why it's one of the honorable mentions because I just there's too much unknown about it. Now my second and final honorable mention is a game called The Last Night. Now, The Last Night looks like a super, super interesting game and it was actually tied for my top 10. I had a really hard time picking between who was going to take my top 10 or the 10th place in my top 10. Um, but it went to the other game that you'll be learning about in a second here. And the reason why I chose it over that is because the other game had more gameplay footage. I actually know what to expect from it. The Last Night, though interesting, and while the art style is beautiful and it reminds me of like a sci-fi story like based in a Blade Runner type universe or whatever, I don't actually know how it plays. So again, I can't really include it because who knows, maybe they release the next trailer and they show the gameplay and you're like, 
okay, this isn't really what I'm into. It's kind of the same thing with Beyond Good and Evil 2. I don't really know what to expect from it. So that's why those two are honorable mentions. But you know what? We've been talking a lot here. So let's just get right into my top 10. So here we're going to start off with number 10. Now this game almost didn't even make it onto my picked trailers for this year because it took them so long to get a full-fledged trailer up. This is Unruly Heroes. Now, as I mentioned in the trailer reaction that this was first announced in the Xbox conference, the Microsoft conference, um, and it was shown for a quick like five seconds in a montage of games that were coming up. Um, but I, I needed to know more. I was like, what is this mysterious game where it has this gorgeous artwork? Now, this game also tied with The Last Knight for, for 10, or like, or almost tied. Like, they're, they're pretty much on the same level, but Unruly Heroes beat it out because you actually get to see what the gameplay is like. And it looks like a more crazy, uh, brawly type version of like a Rayman Legends or Rayman Origins. I, and I'm really, really into that whole idea. So I, I love the look of this. I love the gameplay style. Um, love all the crazy creatures that are in it, and Unruly Heroes is definitely a, a surprise game for me because I didn't expect to see anything simple but beautiful like this, and it has easily become a game that I am uh, anticipating quite a bit. Now, number nine is another game that actually started out at the Microsoft conference. This is Super Lucky's Tale, and I did not have a chance to play the original Lucky's Tale because I don't really... I'm not really into VR. It's not really my thing, and its I don't think it's ever going to be something that I'm going to be into. Um, but the original Lucky's Tale, that's where it took place on. I believe it was on the Oculus. Um, and it always looked like a, a pretty fun little platforming game. Well, now they brought it, so that way it is in uh, Microsoft exclusive, because it's going to be on PC and Xbox One. And it is just a what looks to be a true blue 3D platformer, and we don't get a lot of these nowadays, and I, I was pretty disappointed this year with Ukulele, which was supposed to be a return to form for the 3D platformer, and it was, it, it was a little disappointing. Check out my review if you haven't already if you want to learn more about what I felt about it. But Super Lucky's Tale just looks beautiful. It looks like uh, an evolution, and I, I, I can't be sure yet because I haven't played it, but this trailer is showing off a lot of gorgeous footage, a lot of gameplay, and it's definitely a game that I'm looking forward to playing this year. We've been waiting a while, and it's finally here. Cuphead is coming out in September. Wow! We've been waiting so long. Like, it's, it's been a couple years now for this really simple-looking platformer, but to me, that just says something good about the game. It says it's going to be published. It says that the team who's working on it cares about it. And I personally cannot wait to play through this beautiful 1930s-style world. Number seven is a game that I can't believe Nintendo decided to leave off of the main show. It was the first thing that they introduced after the main show was over, but it was like, man, this is such a big announcement for everybody. Metroid is a series that people have been waiting for a new 2D version of the game for a very long time. So, yeah, this is Metroid Samus Returns. Now, this is a remake of the original Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, but I don't really care. I mean, this, this looks amazing. Uh, they've added a few new abilities and everything to it, and I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm flabbergasted again that they, they left it off the main show because it looks like such a great game. So it's another game that I've added to the list that I am definitely going to be buying day one when it's available. A number six is a game that I personally am very surprised is on my list. Reason being is that two years ago when Sea of Thieves was announced, it looked cool. I actually featured it in my trailers for that year. However, last year in 2016, they showed it again, and it didn't look all that fun. They mainly showed ship combat, and they showed a lot of people sort of like yelling over microphones on Twitch and that kind of thing, and it didn't do much for me, so I didn't even feature it last year because I'm like, oh, whatever, this is what it's focusing on. But now they've brought it back around where they've showed a good long video of what the gameplay is going to be like in the game, and it looks like a ton of fun. You're going to be playing with a crew of pirates who look for sunken treasure under the ocean trying to avoid sharks, while going on land looking for buried treasure and exploring caverns looking for treasure in there, and all the while, you know, shooting skeletons and, and shooting other crews that are trying to steal your loot and using cannons to, you know, blow yourself across the world and everything. It just looks great, so this is one I really can't wait to sink my teeth into. My, of course, gold-plated pirate teeth. Arr! Now, number five might be confusing a few of you, and I say that because 
At the beginning of the video, I said that, you know, I'm, I'm mainly concerned with how a game plays. I, I want to see what the game looks like during the actual game. And uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps does not show off any gameplay. However, I think it's safe to assume that the original Ori only coming out a few years ago, that the new one is really just going to be an updated, more beautiful version of the first game with probably a few more gameplay tweaks and, and new abilities and stuff here and there. So I feel very comfortable featuring it as number five. The original Ori is a great, challenging game, and I expect that this new game is going to be just the same with, again, some new abilities and a much more beautiful look. As you can tell, the first game was already really pretty, but they have doubled down on the visuals in this trailer right here, and it looks gorgeous, so I cannot wait to check this out when it drops, hopefully, next year. I'm so glad that Wolfenstein as a series has gotten an overhaul over the past couple years. And it looks like Machine Games is taking it even further with Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. This game just looks crazy. If you watch the full trailer, which we're not going to be featuring here, but please go check out my full trailer reaction video. And check out all of the nuts stuff that you're going to be able to do in the game. And it just looks amazing. So this is another one that in October when it drops, it's going to probably be a day one purchase for me to one, support machine games, and two, support a series that I've been playing since the 90s and I still enjoy today. So I said it in my trailer reaction video for this game before and I'll say it again. Everybody thought that this game was going to suck. And I believe that this game came out this week and I think it blew everybody's minds. Everyone thought that a Mario mixed with Rabbids game was going to be a complete disaster, but it seems as though they took it and made it so it was almost impossible to not impress people with it. Sure, the Rabbids hate them, if you will. I don't, but I know a lot of people do. Uh, a lot of people do not like them and don't want them anywhere near a established and loved franchise like Mario. But what Ubisoft did is it looks like they created something just completely unique to the Mario world, like, that has never been done before. They're basically taking XCOM, turn-based strategy game, and putting it into Mario, and making it, like, cute and fun with the Rabbids. And the Rabbids are just going nuts. If you are into the Rabbids humor at all, this is going to definitely please you till no end. So, it, that's why it's number three on my list. I, I cannot wait to check this game out, because it looks like a ton of fun. When it comes to gaming nowadays for me, I'm mainly a PC game guy, and I, I buy Nintendo consoles because it has Mario games that I always enjoy and I can't get them anywhere else. So for the past few years, I have been completely avoiding buying an Xbox One or a PS4, pretty much because most of the games I want to play are on PC and Nintendo, and the few exclusives that are out there I can pass on. However, after seeing this Spider-Man game developed by Insomniac this year, I can safely say that this was the first PS4 exclusive game that I've seen where I was like, oh my god, I'm going to have to buy a PS4. I got to play this game. It looks like Spider-Man, the game, is, is pretty much taking where Arkham Asylum, the, the Batman games, have left off. You can tell from this particular scene right here that we're watching that this is very Batman Arkham Asylum. You know, he, he stays up in the Raptors, he attacks enemies from the top, uses environmental stuff to, to take out enemies as well as, as his webbing here. And it looks like a uh, complete evolution of that game. But at the same time, the trailer also showed off some of the uh, platforming stuff that's going on in the game. And uh, it just, wow, it just blew my mind. It looks like you're playing a Spider-Man movie. And not that any of the Spider-Man movies, in my opinion, have been all that great. This looks like what Spider-Man movie ought to be. All these amazing, crazy, cool, uh, you know, camera movements that move along with Spider-Man as he's fighting and swooping and web-slinging and everything. Not to mention all of the, like, what they featured in this demo particularly with Spider-Man moving around and uh, taking out the helicopter and avoiding that uh, large container that's uh, following him through the apartment building just... Wow, I, I, my jaw dropped, and I, it, it was one of those things where I immediately was like, this is a system seller game. This is a game that people are going to say and be like, shit, how do I play this game? Because it looks awesome. And I don't know that it's actually going to make me buy a PS4, but I tell you what, it made number two on my list, and I'm heavily thinking about it just because of this game. Wow, here we are with number one, and is anybody really surprised by this pick? It's Super Mario Odyssey. Now, I, I don't know how well you guys out there, you know, really know me, but I, I am a huge 
Mario fan. I, I've loved Mario since I was a kid, and he continues to impress me, and I enjoy his games to this day. And Super Mario Odyssey has taken the Mario formula, turned it on its head, gone crazy with it, and just made a game that looks like it has soul and has a ton of fun areas to play. And you'll notice that's what I say in a, a lot of my picks here, is that I, I'm looking for fun mostly. You know, I'm not always looking for games that are just beautiful or making a statement. I want to have fun when I play a game. And Mario has always been about fun. And they're turning the fun level up to 11 here with uh, Super Mario Odyssey. So, I, you know, it, it's kind of like a theme of this year, isn't it? You, you got Mario, you got Wolfenstein, you got Mario again with the rabbits or whatever. And it looks like a lot of different developers and, and companies have taken cue that people want things that are a little bit more postmodern and a little bit more silly. You know, a, a lot of people have been following conventions for a long time with gaming and keep and playing it safe. So it's really great to see that companies, especially companies like Nintendo, are going out of their way to make something unique and different and fun. Especially a Mario game where he inhabits other people's bodies and then when he's there they wear his hat and mustache. Like, I don't know. It looks super cute and it looks like a ton of fun. And from some of the gameplay stuff that I've seen on the Nintendo Treehouse, it actually looks like it's going to be pretty challenging too. So, I absolutely cannot wait for this game. Plus, it features my favorite character Bowser in a white suit possibly getting married. Hmm? Well, there you go, everybody. That was my top 10 games from E3 2017, and that's the wrap-up show. Who would have thought it would have been Super Mario Odyssey that won number one, right? Who would have thought, considering how much I like Mario? But I digress. I think this is a great list of 10 games, and I am super, super looking forward to playing at some point soon. And uh, I'm, I gotta thank you guys for watching all of my trailers and, and sticking with me through the whole uh, E3 process here. It's, it's been quite a week. It's been a long week. Like I said, I've been up late doing trailers. And, and But you know what? I've been having a lot of fun with it. I have fun with this every year. And I feel like every year I do this, I'm getting better and better and better at doing it. So hopefully by next year, you guys will be like, wow, this is like as professional as a guess. <laughs> I doubt it. You know, this is always going to be like a home project, I'm sure. But regardless, I, I want to thank you for sticking with me, enjoying the trailers, and I will see you all next time on GGRC. Thanks again for watching all of my E3 2017 coverage. Click the playlist on screen to make sure you didn't miss any of my game picks for this year.